Hello everybody, welcome back to another Adobe Photoshop tutorial. In this one, I've got something cool for you. I'm going to show you how to use Generative Fill, which just launched today in the final version or in the uh, production version. I'm going to show you how to extend your videos. We're going to go from narrow videos or, or the vertical videos that you see in YouTube Shorts and TikToks into extended videos, horizontal videos. And I'm going to show you how to do it step by step using Photoshop. That's right. Photoshop for videos. We're in a weird world. But here, let me show you, let me show you what we're starting with. Here's the original video right off of Pexels. It's free to use. I'll link it in the description below. You can very clearly see that it is horizontal or it's vertical, pardon me. In this version here, if we go back into Photoshop, I've changed it. So now it is a horizontal video with all this on the right side. So I've done this using generative fill. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Let's get started. All right, the first step is to load up Adobe Photoshop 2024. That's right, 2024, and click on New File. When you do that, you're going to get a whole bunch of options. What you generally want to do is you want to create a 1920 by 1080 pixels. So you can click on one of the presets, but you, you can also just go over here to the right side and just type in the exact number. So 1920, 1080, 72, just like this. And you also want to change your background from white or transparent. These are generally the two options you're usually going to start with. I'm going to go to custom and then I'm going to select the brightest red you can select. And the reason why is because when you're looking for gaps between the generative fill and the video, you don't want any seams, any gaps. This is just makes it easier to see it. It's not, a, it's not required, but it's generally what you want to do. Once you've got all that ready, click on create. Now we're cooking. All right. So now that I've opened it up, you're going to see here at the bottom timeline. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that you don't have that enabled at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, I'm going to go to Workspace, and then I'm just going to Reset Essentials. So this is probably what you're seeing. But what you want to do is you want to go up here to Window, and then down here you're going to see Timeline. When you open Timeline, you get the option to do two things. Create a video timeline or create a frame-by-frame -frame animation. I'm going to go ahead and make the timeline a little bigger so you can see it better. Essentially, what you want to do is click on Create Video Timeline. All right, now we're cooking. Now we got to bring in the image or the video that we're going to be working with. In this case, we've got a video. So I'm going to go into my Finder on my Mac. If you're on a PC, you may have it in your uh, Windows Explorer. And I'm just going to grab the video and I'm going to drag and drop it right on top of the canvas. And when I do that, you're going to see here that it's a little bit higher than you probably want. Now, there's a possibility that you just want to move this to something like this and then have, you know, a pretty small gaps on the left and the right side, depending again on what type of video you have. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm just going to pull on one of these corners and I'm just going to make mine a little thinner because I really want to sell the effect to you. So I'm going to go with something like that and then I'm going to go ahead and center it. And then I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. And now I've gone ahead and placed our video. I'm going to hit enter and presto, it's placed. Now let's get to the next step. All right, so the next step is on making sure you're selected on the image or the video here, which I'm, I've done. Go to the left side and grab your rectangular marquee tool. I'm just going to start pulling it down from outside, but you'll notice here that it's gone ahead and actually started it in the top left corner. But if you start outside of it, you don't have to worry. It'll do it for you. I'm going to pull it down to the bottom so everything's selected. And then if you look nice and carefully, I'm going to let go here and I'll zoom in nice and deep here. You're going to see here that I selected a little bit more than I should have, but that's actually on purpose. I'm selecting this because what you don't want is the seam between the original video and then the generative fill. So I've gone a little further than I normally would, but that's quite on purpose to avoid the seam. The next step is once you've made the selection, left click or click on generative fill. It'll ask you if you want something in specific. In this case, I don't, but if you wanted a pink unicorn, type in pink unicorn, it will do it for you. I don't want that. I just want it to be a natural continuation of the scene or of the video and without any nonsense or any funny stuff in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it blank and then I'm going to click on generate. It'll take a few seconds. I'll come back when it's done. I'll show you what we got. Okay, so here we go. We've got three options. This is the first one. It's not bad. You can see a little bit of a seam here, but it's not too obvious. I'll click on the second one. Not quite as good in my opinion. And then the third one is not bad actually, but you know what? Let's go with the first one. 
this looks pretty good. There's not a very obvious seam between the video and the, the, um, the generative fill, but when there is, I can show you a technique at the end to sort of smudge in and, and get rid of it. But there we go. We've gone ahead and made the left side of the panel. You can look at this as kind of like a triptych if you're into art, where we've got the middle panel and now we're making the left and the right panel. So the next step here, if you want to continue along, just grab your tool and you just want to select the other side here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see that I've gone a little bit over the border, which again is deliberate. And then I'm just going to click on generative fill and then I'm gonna generate it again. This should take just a few seconds. I'll come back and show you what we got, and then I'll show you how to put it in the timeline and render it. All right, so it's actually done a better job on the right side, in my opinion. This is almost perfect. Let's take a look at the other two options. Okay, that's pretty damn good too, actually. And uh, also very good. So I'm gonna go with the first one, but again, you guys can, if you wanted a different look, depending on what you're going for, or if you don't get what you want, you can always click on regenerate. So now let's take a look down here at the bottom right. You'll see that we've got new layers. We have our original video layer, and then we've created a second layer. These create layers automatically with masks. And then you'll see here that we've got now the three panels. Now let's go back into our timeline. I'll move this up here down at the bottom under artboard. I'm gonna click on that little um, triangle and you'll see here or that Chiron, I believe the word is. And you'll see here, if I just zoom out, We've got generative fill, and it's gone ahead and filled the, the top one, filled the second one, filled the third one. If I move the playhead and I hit play, we should have a good looking video. Let's see what we got. Look at that. That is pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like we actually extended it out. Remember, if this comes back and you've only got like, you know, the, the image or the one of the, the layers is only this long, you can just go ahead and extend it kind of like you are working in a video editor. So that is literally all there is to it. I want you to keep in mind that if you have a video that has motion in it or the camera's moving around, this won't look correct because the middle part will be moving and wobbling and the left and the right sides are going to be, you know, stationary. So do keep that in mind. You want to have a still shot. If you've got movement, you want to put it into a program like Premiere Pro and then warp stabilize it first to no motion. Again, it's not a requirement, but it's something to keep in the back of your head if you don't get the results you exactly want. Finally, to export it or to get rid of it or just send it on to your hard drive, I just go up to File, and then I'm going to go... There's a couple ways to do this. My favorite way is to go to Export, and then I'm going to go Render Video. When you do that, you get a whole bunch of options. I'm going to call this Coffee Cup. And then, again, I want this to be 1920 by 1080. So I've already preset HDTV 1080p. This is depending on, again, on the size that you want. Select what you need. You can also go in and write out exactly what you want. So if you wanted this to be 4,000, you can go ahead and make that 4,000. I'm going to do, again, 1920. I'm going to have it in high quality. And then literally, I just go to render, and it's going to cook it up. So it just should take a few seconds here. Let's see where we're at. So there it goes. It's exporting the video. I'm going to go to my finder here. And then if I go to my desktop, I've already run a copy of it. So I'll just open it to show you. And there it is. We've gone ahead and taken a vertical video. We've made it horizontal with Photoshop like a boss. Thanks for watching.